This is Oxbow Lake, the heart of the Oxbow Lake Park in St. Paul, Virginia. Now this isn't our destination today, just a beautiful body of water next to the Clinch River. Today I'm taking a hike up to the top of a hill where the remains of a historic house stand. Hello folks, I'm Steve Gilley and this is Stories, a History of Appalachia. This trail is the Sugar Hill Trail, named for the hill I'm getting ready to climb. You see, a sugar manufacturer was located here in the 1930s, thus the name. But there's more to this place than that, a whole lot more. You see, in the 1770s, a man named John English settled here, making him and his family the first white settlers to arrive in what's now Wise County, Virginia. As you can imagine, the folks already here, the Native Americans, weren't too happy to see him and others arrive. On Christmas Day, 1782, a group of Shawnee warriors raided this place, capturing a young man named Cox, who they scout. March 8, 1787, there was another attack on his farm in which John's wife, Molly, and their two sons were killed. That was just about enough for John English. Well, as you can tell, this is the heart of coal country because what you're hearing is a coal train coming right across the river from where I'm at. So just bear with me as we continue our story. In 1791, he sold his land to a French baron named Pierre Francois de Tubouf, who had some grand ideas for his Appalachian property. This is where the French Revolution comes in. You see, the Tabouf had been a French coal entrepreneur who had a commission to work coal mines in southeastern France. And work them he did, regardless of how badly that work hurt his employees' health and safety. He was so badly regarded that he made enemies, powerful enemies. In fact, he'd gotten himself into debt so badly at one point that one of his creditors had kidnapped his wife and held her as collateral for the money owed. Now, when the French Revolution began, Tabouf left for England. There he met a man named Richard Smith who just so happened to have a vast tract of land for sale along the Clinch River, 55,000 acres to be exact. He and the Baron worked out a deal, and soon Baron the Tabouf was on his way to Appalachia, accompanied by some of his family and his servants. He moved into the English house along with his servants and began to bring in French settlers to Appalachia. He even founded a town there he named St. Marie. But the Baron had problems with his neighbors, a mix of Indians, Melungeons, and white settlers who'd encroached on his 55,000 acres. He'd send his servants out with guns to chase these folks away again and again and again. Soon, his reputation in America began to match his reputation in France. Oh, one thing, though. Baron Pierre-Francois de Tabouf had a thing about snakes. Like, he was terrified of them. He even had a special pair of snake-proof boots made in France that he would wear in the woods for protection. Soon everybody else knew about this, and before long, dead rattlesnakes and copperheads would turn up at his door. Folks even took to carrying sacks of snakes to throw at his gun-toting servants to scare them away, which worked. Well, the Baron met his end in April 1795 on Election Day when two men named Brown and Barrow arrived at his house. Now, they were invited in to rest and partake in a meal, and when the Baron turned his head, they attacked and killed him, then ransacked the house, stealing everything they could get their hands on, before trying to murder his family. A servant maid drowned trying to swim across the Clinch River to get away from the two. Three men were tried and convicted in connection with the crime and found guilty, but the Baron's death meant the death of the colony as his remaining sons returned to France in 1803. And that's why I took this hike. You are looking at Baron de Tabouf's house, or what remains of it, since it was destroyed in an arson in 1976. At the time, the logs were covered with siding, but had been lived in for quite a while. Now 
As you can see on what's left of the chimney, there's a sign telling what happened here. I'll read it for you. In 1772, John English settled here, making him the first settler in present Wise County. On March 8, 1787, Indians suddenly burst into his home, killing his wife, Molly English, and their two little boys. John English moved to Morris Fort in Castlewood and later sold this home and land to a Frenchman, Francois-Pierre de Tubouf. All that's left is the chimney and the foundation rocks, as you can see. A shelter and picnic table has been built here, along with a porta potty, as you can tell. Here's a look behind the chimney, and as you can see, there's the foundation rocks that were laid out for the building itself. A lot of them still scattered around here, along with some bricks from the chimney as well. Folks, this is what remains of a French colony in Appalachia 230 years ago. Another bit of the history of this place we call home, Appalachia. Be sure to click that subscribe button down below and give us a thumbs up, okay? And go listen to our podcast at storiespodcast.net, where this week we tell the full story of this place. Until next we meet. So long, everybody. <laughs>